barking at the wrong tree. Fufu is on me. Come to my now half past eight. You want it if you come to me. Oh yeah. Check it. Ah, check the rice. Don't you know it's a special rice? It's also called jollof rice. Yay! You bend this tree. What are we going to do with the rice? Are we going to eat it with food? Oh, turn the cooker on before you burn the jollof. Turn the cooker on before you burn the jollof. Turn the cooker on before you burn the jollof. Turn the cooker on. Before you burn the jollof, listen. Don't bring me beef. You can eat beef in your mom's house. When it comes to mine, bring some beef. We'll cook some stew. My face. Hi guys, welcome back to the ZZ Meal Show. I am ZZ Mills, and in the building, I have a very special person. I'd like to consider you as a friend, Eddie. Oh, I would. That's because nice, before we started filming, yeah, I was saying we've known each other for over 15 years. Yeah, man. A long time. 15. That's a long, a time. long time. For sure. You see me grow up. And you see me grow up. That's the thing. Because I was looking at it, okay, you're, you're slightly younger. Slightly, yeah. Yeah. So like the fact that you've said I've seen you, you've seen me grow up. And it's a, yeah, it's a special thing, man. I saw a tweet. Was it the tweet? I saw a tweet or something I saw the other day. And it said something like, we need to talk about how Eddie Caddy has, is still like around. Even though that sounds so bad when Hasn't people say- Hasn't been deported yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I think it's so bad when people say that because there's so much pressure yeah. on like us as people within the entertainment world to stay relevant. Yeah. And you can't slack a little bit. And if you do, if, you, if we don't hear from you for six months, that means you're, you run out of money and no one cares about you. Yeah, but what, what they were saying was that you've managed to still be with in the culture yeah you still manage to and it doesn't feel corny unfortunately i feel like there are some a lot of people i shouldn't say a lot there's there's enough people Speaking, <laughs> there's enough people <laughs> that you see and you think oh bruv just let it go as long as there's culture yeah. and there will be there will always be culture that i will exist because um it's my right i think it's everyone's right culture is everyone's right what i mean by that is we all have a purpose, have a role to represent to some degree. And some people just choose to do it um, gracefully. Other people see it as a performance. I don't see it as a performance. It, it is a part of me. If I wasn't a comedian or a host or a presenter, I would still be that person that loves who I am and wants to talk to everybody about where I come from mm -hmm. and what that means. Why don't you do skits? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like the way you looked up and you thought, where should I go from? Bang. Because why, yeah. Yeah, why don't you do skits? Do you know, I've been asked that question a lot. Um, I started off, I, we can call it, I think I started off doing skits before the whole social media thing blew up, right? A couple of the ones that I, I did, we could call it skits, so we could just say, I was making funny songs, right. and then they went online. Yeah, yeah, true, Like, you know, true, my parking true. attendance, my yeah, pounder yeah, dance, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 And then yeah. they did the job that they needed to do, and, and, and established the person I was back then. But I, I'm, I'm a fan of live. I'm a live performer. Um, I'm extremely spontaneous just in life anyway. So improv was my thing when I started doing stand-up properly. Everything, my whole career was carved around like, oh, this seems fun, let me do that. Yeah, but yeah. I want to say th this to people right now. So it got to a stage where I don't like the idea of practicing something over and over again that I thought of at that moment. I'm putting it out there and then people are commenting and saying, oh yeah, that's really amazing. But I, I like that idea and I thought about this now or I've rehearsed this and I put it at one time and you can see it there and then. So in fact, that, that challenge is about me. And I also think... I think that's why I find them a little bit corny. Okay. I, I, I really, right. I really um, have a weird relationship with them because I came... I Who's used, them? The, the pe people who do skits? No, just skits in general. Okay, in general. Because, okay. because I can't like park it on one person because sometimes I might yeah, yeah, yeah. see skits from one person. Yeah. I could watch a skit from Kevin Hart and find yeah. it corny. It's not just one person. I get you. And then I could watch another skit from him and be like, oh, that was funny. I enjoyed it. But I think my, my thing is like you. It's just how many times did you have to record this? And we're also supposed to believe that this was off the cuff, yeah, which it wasn't off the cuff because you, you had to film see, with different I see, angles. I see, I know what you're saying, but let me be clear what I mean, but I think everyone's got their talent, okay? Everyone's got their talent. Some people, and, and also the way people break down comedy 
has changed over the years because the new age social media, the, 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 the generation of now, 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 you know, uh, little skits, memes and that, people see that as comedy. And you actually see a comedy category where you've got different types of comedians where for me, stand-up is what made me a comedian. And that's, the, what, that's what I believe in. Would you say that's what, if you're a comedian, in your eyes, yeah. should you be able to do stand-up? No, I don't think you should. I think comedy is the art of laughter. It's the art of, um, you've got a sense of humour, it's an act of joy. However you deliver it in your own style, that's cool. Some people see it. There's no one, not everyone wants to come out, sit down and watch someone talk with a mic for an hour, half an hour. Some people just want to be a group. This guy is so funny and repeatedly makes me happy. Yeah. But what makes me comfortable in terms of my angle of comedy is stand-up, right? That live performance, even though we do practice these things, but you will never know until you perform in front of an audience. So that, that reaction of people, like there's a multitude of people, different backgrounds, got different scenarios. Someone might have just got a divorce. Another person just received a deportation letter. Someone else might be getting sacked. But all, all these people with different backgrounds, in the same room, different emotions, and you're making them laugh at the same time. That for me is special and feeling that sort of um, instant connection. But other people, it's like, cool, I want to be able to create something, practice it, give it to the world and see how the world feels. That's not something that I've never really been able to attach myself to, but it's worked for a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, it does. You know, it's worked for a lot of um, comedians. I first came across you, as we say, in 15 years ago, and I used to talk about the live shows. I used to come to all of your live shows, <laughs> like all of them. Like when you first the started doing the like big, like in the theatres, yeah, I would yeah, say- yeah. Mermaid Theatre. Yeah, Mermaid Theatre, yeah. you did, um, co I think you did Cockpit. Uh, no, no, I didn't. No. I did. I did Mermaid Theatre, then Shaw Theatre right, in yeah. um, in King's Cross. Yes, then that after was that, it. then we, I think we came back to the Mermaid. Then went to the Indigo. Yes. Yeah. O2 yeah. Arena, yeah. not Indigo. Well, the Indigo first. We did Indigo twice before we did the O2. Right. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like so, and I I feel like I came to pretty much every single one of those shows. You did. Because, I remember you. And did, I used yeah. to buy the tickets. I used to have to meet up with your then manager, yeah. buy the tickets off him, would come down, and I used to thoroughly enjoy it. Used to do the, you, you used to do your little live skits, like you're For saying, sure. on yeah. prov on stage. And I remember there was one guy there that I used to really fancy, Jason. I love, love you, Jason. You, uh, really? Oh my God. I used to, Jason Lewis. Oh my God. Is this, is it? <laughs> I used to love him. What do you mean? Listen, you are too late. Too late. You, After know. all these years, I know. this is where you got brave. You're not brave to say it. Back in the days, you could do it. I literally was just like, oh my god! I, when I used to see him come on the stage and do the skits, I'd be like, who is that guy? Yeah, and I He's love Jason amazing. Lewis, man. And he and he was at the time doing stand up. A great writer became an even better writer at the time. But he was another guy that just wanted to support me. So it was just like, bro, let's do this together. Do you know what I mean? And he would do his part. But I, once again, we used to do being Congolese as well. I'm. Re, I'm I loved watching Congolese theatres when I was younger and you know there was an audience watching people just do skits live right. there and then and didn't really think too much about it. That's how my shows used to be. So the first hour, just be mucking about and then stand up and then, you know, interview people yeah, yeah, yeah. about slapstick. Yeah, man. So I don't normally do this, because, but I feel like there's not a lot of interviews with you around, so. <laughs> Because yeah, if I if I you have someone, you went you went looking. No, well, yeah, there's not a lot, and also with you have other people on. People they've done loads of interviews, so the the quote unquote boring questions like tell us how you got into it. Yeah, I could go. Anyone could go watch a thousand interviews of them talking about how this. That's why I normally don't ask those questions. Oh, yeah. But with you now, there's not that common knowledge of. So talk me through the beginning stages of like. You're, you're, you were born in Congo, I was right? born in Congo. Okay, cool. Um, so, so, just, I was, yeah. so I was born in Congo. Um, I left Congo when I was eight, eight nine mm -hmm. years old. Moved to the UK. Couldn't speak a word of English, you know. Um, and it was just, you know, it's once again, like a lot of people, you know, my generation, our parents just came over to find a better life, opportunities. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And um, I didn't, at the time, I didn't understand the reasons why, really. It was just like, bro, I'm enjoying myself back home. Do you know what I mean? Big family. I was going to say that. Did yeah. you enjoy living? I back loved home? it. Oh, okay, uh, right. The sense of freedom, the innocence that came with it. I was very loved by both my maternal and uh, paternal families. You know, extremely close to my, uh, my grandparents, especially my mum's mum. Mm. She pretty much raised me. Do you know what I mean? So I have fond memories of being woken up in the morning by her going to church, Catholic church with her, then coming back and she used to, like, she had a bar, she used to sell bread, she was an entrepreneur, she had a farm, we used to go to the farm, but this was banging in the middle of the city, yeah. you know? But then on my dad's side of the family, it was like my granddad was a village chief, so he would be back and forth between the village and the city, a man of 23 kids. Wow. So that made a massive family, right? So it's like I grew up with peop, um, aunties and uncles that were my age or younger than me. Mm -hmm. 
some of them. So it was just, there was a lot of love um, back and forth. So you can almost understand where I felt like, man, it's, I understand why you're looking for better opportunity, but I'm, I'm all right here. Yeah. But as you're growing up, you've come to understand that, you know, some of the things I've been exposed to in this country have just been, uh, it's made sense. And I'm grateful for my parents for making that move, you know? So growing up in the UK, um, I'm from a family of four, so I'm the eldest, yeah? And, um, and it was just the usual, man, African families. Like, listen, justify why I chose to bring you here <laughs> rather than your cousins. You understand? That's how, that's how it was with my dad. It was literally that thing of where just through conversation and seeing our, cousin, our older cousin growing up, you know you have to go for the education path. And I did, I did primary school here, um, secondary school, college, and a university. And th that was pretty straightforward for me. It's when I got to uni, studying media technology, I joined the ACS. And as I, I, the way yeah. you said that was like, that's when it all changed. That's when it all changed. <laughs> no, because it, I was one of those guys where my dad always encouraged, you know, try and do extracurricular activities. So when you present your CVs, they will know that you don't just have a degree, you've done extra stuff, go straight into the workplace. So I was like part of the ACS, the African Caribbean Society. And I was uh, one year's spokesperson, another year's president. And that's when we started putting together showcases. I've never really performed before. But we put together the first ever Kingston University showcase because I was the spokesperson. I used to just do debates and meetings and stuff. And was like, you know what? You just kind of host it. Right. And I hosted it along with my friend Camilla at the time. Um, and we had fun. But during that time, it was just like, I thought to myself, how do I make this fun? We had a showcase, a fashion show. So I started impersonating some of my friend's uncles. Like, so was you always funny as a child, though? I, because you know, you, know what? you always say, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, like, they made you, like, like my mum always says I was a comedian growing up. I don't know what happened, but I used to tell jokes and I'm naturally quite a funny person. I, know, no, no, I would like to think so. I think you're funnier than you think. At this well, you yeah, know, I think we'll, you're funny. You think some of that causes a bit of controversy, but we're going. To. Okay, cool. But, but once yeah. it was you a funny child. It, it, in hindsight, at church, my friends always laugh at stuff. I, in school, I, I think a part of me being funny was growing up. The transition between being this proper freshie, mm -hmm. as people use the word at the time, yeah, mm -hmm. like fresh off the boat, strong accent like didn't really understand English, struggling to try and speak. And I think those things made it funny back in those days, but then I didn't care. Like if I was struggling to speak English, I was switched to Lingala. I, didn't, I was like, listen, you don't understand what I'm saying? Yeah, or I, no, I'm gonna make sure you don't understand what I'm saying for sure. You know, so it's like, those things made me funny, but as, the more my confidence grew, even going to church and stuff and being at school, I just became that, that, that guy. But I don't think I was like the class clown, but I was just very confident. So I, I think back, I used to be the guy that people would just be like, yeah, you made me laugh today, that was hilarious. So then when did you know, because one thing, I feel like comedy is extremely hard to, I think it's probably one of the hardest within the entertainment industry because there's not a lot. And also within the UK, we don't have a lot of examples of people that have actually managed to do quote unquote, whatever you decide is yeah. deem as successful or do really well, that have, I don't think we have a lot of those people. Yeah. So when did you think, oh, okay, I can actually do this? It happened in stages, man. Because once I had finished uni, I was already performing at different universities, just hosting showcases. There, was, there wasn't an element of stand-up. It was just right. being a funny host. Right, okay. You know, and I think to be fair, at the time, it was like impersonating my culture, like almost in my spirit, in my being, in my accents you know, just really celebrating being African and then seeing the reaction of other Africans who had not really seen someone celebrating it so openly, yeah. you know, and so candidly as well. So it was like, when I got those reactions, I realized I've got something here that I love. I love the reaction of people seeing me be me, yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't when, when sort of people that you've seen perform, maybe on TV or heard of like, um, you know, I, I bumped into Richard Blackwood um, and he said to me, you, You've got something. Actually, when Richard Blackwood first saw me, he thought I resembled a guy that robbed him at gunpoint. But that's a whole different story. Because oh, wow. the first time he looked at me, he was like, what's your name? I was like, brother, you relax. <laughs> but yeah, but he said to me, you've got something. And when you hear it from those kind of guys, you know, I remember going to Kojo's Comedy Funhouse, one of the earliest, oh, yeah. performing some of like, just my funny songs. And he was like, come back next week mm. and perform this again. So those people, you're like, all right, I like this. Mm. It gives me a bit of adrenaline. I feel like I'm, I'm relevant in, in enjoying my culture and people enjoying it with me. So those were the early, like, we're, we're looking at 2005, you know, back then, and it felt like, yeah, I, I want to do this, man. And then it was, what happened, because you was with Black Grape. Yes. What happened with that? Because um, I remember you guys did a lot of great things together. We enjoyed, man. And you enjoyed, and I feel there was a lot of, like, bubbling around, like, 
it was like, oh, Eddie Caddy, like this is, he's about to, you know, there was all that bubbling. And then there was a time, I don't know if, because you just wasn't on my radar, I feel like you went quiet and you wasn't around. And then yeah. I was like, and I was like, oh, he, he's not with Black Grape. And I was like, what? And because I obviously knew you guys personally, I was like, oh my God, like that's interesting. What, what happened there? Black Grape, Black Grape was a family, man. Um, and it still is a family because I'm connected to a lot of people yeah. uh, that contributed massively to my career. Mm -hmm. You understand? Like going back from uni, you know, um, just like befriending someone that was on the same level as you, you know, in terms of the vision in T, yeah? yeah? And then, of course, then the family became bigger and bigger because everyone was just invested in this thing where we were just all promoting culture, promoting music at the time, live band, all that vibe. Yeah. And we were extremely audacious. That's one thing. We would go to universities and just create different ways of promoting ourselves, using, even back then, DVDs to promote our own stuff and just instead of just flyers, but that, that turned into me going into stand-up and, and people coming out with these ideas saying, Ed, the stand-up thing is really, it's hard at the moment because everyone's doing comedy, right? But it's like the mainstream is not even talking to us right now. Right. We don't, you know, it's, it's really hard to get to a level like a Lenny Henry, a, a, a Richard Blackwood, a Gina mm -hmm. Yashere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So like, we, we had to be creative. So we started putting together our own shows. Like we really took it to the audience. And that was all the audacious move of, of, of a bunch of people. Right, and it got to a stage, I think, certain things happen in different people's lives. You have to understand, we came from, I was like 18, 19 when I met the gang. We were all around the same age. Moved into like finishing uni, 21, 22, you know, 23, 24, 25. Like we built to the point where we became so popular in doing first of a lot of uh, stuff, you know, um, big venues. The Indigo, one of the first to perform there. Yeah. And then we decided to open a restaurant because we became so popular in North London, which you visited a oh few times. What Black do you mean? Grape. I used to love Black <laughs> Grape. Lived there, I lived you know? there. But I loved Black Grape because you guys were, had the Caribbean and yeah. the African, and it was just the best blend ever. This I always was all, say that. Yeah, this was all part of like being able to j not just serve ourselves, but serve our community and bring our shows. Do you think you were before your time? I Black think Grape, so. I, because... I'm, a lot of the, the, you know, what you guys were going by was like, you know, putting back into the community, yeah. building this kind of like media powerhouse where you yeah. had loads of different people, you know, art, gospel artists, yeah. The, yeah. you had jazz artists, you had yeah. every, like, do you get what I mean? Yeah. And now you see that a lot. You see that, you see that all the time with we, people. We, yeah. So, but that, would you think it was before We, we had a dope family. Governor B was amazing. Um, uh, Yolanda Brown. Yeah. You know, like that whole clique was great, and those people have gone on to do amazing stuff. We, I, I, I don't like saying we were ahead of our time because then that, that kind of, um, to me, says that things that should have happened didn't happen. Like things, things that were supposed to happen happened. Right, we okay. set ourselves on a level where we, we were able to do things with minimal resources. That you know, compared to what people have now, we just got to a stage where we had to make adult decisions mm. differently. Everyone's got a purpose, man, yeah. and I think when questions are raised or the next move is your challenge with the next move you've got to be true to yourself and i think that's when we reached a point where it was like is this where i want to go with you right. no you know what i mean and we came to it was a lot of disagreements um and, and i think it was healthy uh, however way it, it, it played out it was healthy because after we're done the o2 it was almost like okay where are we going from here do you understand? And certain questions are raised and you're kind of like, well, I kind of feel like I need to be here. Or well, I kind of feel like I need to be there. And I don't regret those decisions because that was also my transition into experiencing mainstream. Yeah. So after 20, 2010, going to 2011, I got you know, taken over by another management company and um, they were mainstream. They had uh, Russell Brands and the Davina McCalls and Thelma O'Leary's and all these big names. But that's when I found out that you've got to stay true to your purpose, your principles, because I was not ready to drop some of my principles and the plans that I had for my career wow. in order to now amass these, like, gain these millions of fans. I am, I am very loyal to my purpose. That's what makes me who I am. That's why I'm still here. I always find it interesting talking to people that kind of have to, like, adapt their career to new ways, if that makes sense. That's so you was there before Instagram, like yeah, Instagram man. wasn't the I way, was there during my you, you know what I mean? <laughs> so now all these new platforms that come out, yeah. How do you, and you're, you're, you're already kind of cemented in your career anyway, how then do you start moving around and not being corny? Because that's, I, I don't know. You don't everyone, think I'm corny? No, I don't. And I feel, that's what I'm saying. I feel that there's people that have been probably around just as long as you are. Yeah. And to me, I look at them and I'm like. Oh. See, I feel like some people see me as corny because I think once again, what happens is people think what you did before, which worked, 
yeah, if we want to use that word, which um, gave you relevance in the industry, you continue to do that, it becomes, oh, we've seen it too much now. Oh, stop, stop moving your waist so much, Eddie Kelly. Why are you always dancing? Why are you always using the accent? Why are you always... But actually, for me, I have a reason. The same tools, the same way I use the tools that were available to me back then, I apply myself to the new tools. Everything's about visibility. Right. So my purpose still stands the same. I want to break down stereotypes of Africans around the world. How people see being African. And when I say, when I, when I use the term African, I don't just mean those from the motherland. I believe, you know, those that are in Brazil, those in the Caribbean. But just how we're seen and our relationships together needs to, be, needs to change. And I feel like I have my role to play with that. And I've always embraced that role, you know? And I use the tools that are relevant. That's never really gonna stop. If you, when you say you wanna break down stereotypes, yes. but then do you not feel like you feed into those stereotypes with stereotype jokes? No, because I, okay, so here's my thing. In order to get the attention of people, right. I literally be a person and bring you in. Because the whole thing is, oh yeah, you know, he's African, yeah. This is how you lot see us, right? But let me break down why you see us like this. Let me break down why, why you, you're, maybe you, you are afraid of this accent or you have a perceived uh, sort of, um, you have a view of our culture, how we behave, why we behave like that. For example, when I talk about where I come from, Congo, right, and I, and I recently had this challenge by another fellow comedian on ITV, which is, it was, it was a, a show it was full of banter, and then Congo came up, and, and then the, the comedian mentioned, oh, Congo, don't they have Umbongo there? And I've been hearing about Umbongo, this juice Umbongo for years. But I had to actually look at him and think, I get that. But you see, when people think about Congo, one thing is it exposes your intelligence or lack of intelligence, yeah, which yeah. means you might just think Congo just umbongo or they love wearing loud colors. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. actually Congo is the reason why technology flows the way it does because coltan is a mineral that's needed for most things that are electrical, right? So two thirds of that coltan mineral is from Congo. Right. Rubber, mm -hmm. half of it from Congo, if you look at your history and so many other things that contribute to the world. But for me, I will be able to put that through my stand up. But even when I talk about just being African, why do people look at Nigerians in a certain way, Ghanaians in a certain way? What's the relationship between the Caribbeans? How does the world look at us? If I draw you in, in everything that you think, oh, that's so typical African, you hear what I'm saying? The pride that I have and own in everything that you think we have is what makes you go, you're funny, but I also hear you. That's my aim. I feel like we should do clicking. <laughs> that was a clicking moment. Is it, is it a click, yeah? Yeah, but do you think, is it hard being a comedian? Do peop are people not taking you seriously? Well, they do, mm. but the, so you, people will probably listen to what you just said and be like, wow. Yeah. It's a bit like, it's not the same because, but it's a bit like when Nasty came on the show and he was spitting gems, but no one would ever, yeah. every, every, everyone was like, oh my God, Ross, Nasty, so intelligent. It's like, why didn't you think, you know what I mean? Why didn't you Zizi. think? So as a comedian, is it not difficult? Because people it's must not. just make me laugh People now. say that, but this is the thing. Someone will come to me and say, oh, well, what do you do? What do you, you know, just could be an icebreaker. So what do you ask? I'm a comedian. I'm like, oh, they'll be like, oh, but what, you know, are you funny? <laughs> what? It will make me laugh. And I'll be like, what do you do? I say, I'm a doctor. Yeah, I've got a headache. Do you want to? Oh, let me operate. <laughs> Split my head open right now. As I'm making you laugh, you be spitting my head. Let's be, let's exchange, let me, let's exchange trade. But my whole thing is this, right? I always say this, and I speak for almost every comedian um, that's going, going through the craft and understanding that telling jokes is no joke because the, there's the process of being able to affect people just by your words mm. is, it's, it's a very psychological process and it's, and, and it takes a lot of depth. It takes a lot of people go, some people take it from trauma and turn those things into happiness. So someone that might be going through the same issues, the same issues that that person is tackling during that point, they go, oh my God, I never looked at it that way. Yeah. Oh, I get it. Oh, you come out from that. That's so funny. But also other people literally make things up. It's a make-believe world that you now are able to go through. So for me, it takes a lot of serious people to go through that. Now, the other side to it is also, in terms of people taking it seriously, people will only take you as serious as you take yourself. There comes a moment where it is a job for me, yeah. right? It is a job, which I love, I admire, which doesn't feel like a job. But there's a point where you come off stage, your personality must take over, you know? Mm -hmm. your, your, your purpose, your means, what you want to say to people must take over. Because if someone's constantly laughing at everything that you want to do, or you, every point you want to make across, you've got to check yourself and say, why? <laughs> what is it about me that's not making that line clear? And I think I've been able to make that line clear. How hard has it been, though, being a comedian with all these, like, politically correct things? I mean, I'm not there. That you're like, that do you, so when you see, you know, like, the Dave Chappelle yeah. and P 
people getting a lot of ba backlash. You can't, as a comedian, I, I do feel a bit sorry for the art in mm -hmm. general because the art is taking, a lot of being a comedian, my, what, what, well, the type of stand-up comedy I like, is usually when they're taking the piss out of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. My, my culture, other people's culture, like, I don't, it's funny because you, you all might know somebody that acts like that, or stereotypes can be funny. I don't understand. Anyone that says they're not, within reason, obviously, they yeah. can be funny. So how can it be for you now where you can literally say one wrong thing and people are like, that's not funny. Well, first of all... That's actually being this. And you're like, well, no, I'm a comedian, so I'm going to yeah, look yeah. at everything. The trauma, like you just saying, somebody might take their trauma and decide, actually, I'm going to make it into a, now a good piece of, and make it funny. You can't do that anymore because people are like, you're making fun of this. Absolutely. But, okay, but it was my experience. But you still can't do that because there's a million other people that have had that experience and now you've triggered them. So here's the thing, right? For me, um, first, the first thing I want to say based on that is the world is full of hypocrites. Mm -hmm. We're all hypocrites yeah. because we literally go on group chats, um, go and visit our parents, meet up with our mates, and we say the craziest things, right? We all do. A lot of people, like, they say the craziest thing that some other people might find offensive, but we all do it to each other. Right. And, but when it comes to the public, it's like anything. Some people pick their nose when the door is shut. When they come outside, I know it's not you, but me, it's not happening. It's not happening, yeah? I have an image to uphold. But everybody does that. But when we all come in front of the camera or uh, just in public, we pretend like we're all saints. Mm -hmm. That's just how the world operates. We, we are all image people. So in order to uphold that image, we have to also pretend that we don't agree or disagree with certain things. Some, a lot of things that we say as jokes, we don't actually believe it when it comes to action. But at the time, it's funny, all right, cool. We've got to a stage now where we want comedy to do so many things. People have always wanted comedy to soothe them, make them laugh, make them forget about whatever, use it as escapism until it offends you. But you, everybody's a comedian. The difference is, are you brave enough to go on stage and say the things that you say behind closed doors, right? I have, like for example, Dave Chappelle, maybe a different comedian to me, Kevin Hart, Richard Blackwood, you know, Mo the comedian. They, they may all be different comedians to how, who I am, but, the fact of the matter is, we try our best to stay true to ourselves. As long as we're treating you with that way, as long as we're, we're, we're kind of looking after you guys and your mental psyche, amazing sense of humor, everyone's happy. The moment where it comes across like, if I laugh on this, it's a reflection on me. It's not about me anymore. It's what you laugh at. Oh, I can't laugh at that. But deep inside, you're dying. You're probably going to die when you go home because everyone's become political, right? So for me, it's this. The bigger you become, the more you get scrutinized. That's just life, yeah? And that's, that's something you have to accept, being in the media, being in the public eye, being in entertainment. So, but also, what do you want to stand for? So, Dave Chappelle believed in what he believed in. He's like, you can tell, he's like, this is what I want to be remembered for. And to an extent, you've got to be like, oh, cool, kudos to you, bro, because this is what you want to be remembered for. Go for it. Not everyone is going to agree. And then some people are just like, this is my limit. You've got to name your price. So, for me, the things I believe in are things I always speak about. Yeah. I don't actually, like look at it in a way, oh my God, if I say it like this, people are going to be offended. If I say this, people, I don't think about it that way until it happens. Because you're basically saying, if you believe it in it enough, you're then gonna that's be your yourself. truth. Like you should, be your, yeah, yeah. Because I can't say to someone, oh, you can't be your truth because the world is going to look at it in a certain way. Then you haven't lived. Are we not all meant to die empty, as they say? Live your truth. And if that's what kills you, then I guess you've, you've lived your purpose. And I'm, I'm a great believer in gift and purpose. Right. I, we have a gift. A lot of us have different gifts. Some people have gifts in building. They, they're really good with their hands, just in general. Some people have gifts in, for me, I have a good sense of humor, comedy, but what am I doing with that gift? What message am I delivering? Am I educating people? Am I making my family proud? Should I mean all those things? It's like, if I fulfill that gift, all the other noise that comes with it, that's the, that's the price we pay. So you mentioned Mo. Talk yeah. to me how it felt. My guy, I, Mo. I, went, I went to the... Mo Arena. Yeah. That's yeah, yeah, Mo the, the Mo 2. Mo 2, that was it. Mo 2. I went to the, the show there. It was amazing. It was yeah, man. Ni it was so nice to just see, even like comedians that I, again, I've grown up going to watch live, like Slim and seeing. But like I said, the last time I think I was there, from somebody from the UK, yeah. was your show. Right. Um, how did that feel? Like, what emotions? And give me your real emotions. I got you. I got because you. I can imagine the most obvious one. You're happy. Yeah. It's your brother. Yeah. You're happy to see it. But is there ever a moment where you're like, I miss this or I miss, I like, 
it's so weird because I was talking to someone about this and they were saying they think it's so weird that maybe people that were before so I was talking about Angel I was yeah. like I think Angel's Love amazing Angel. it's my guy. he's amazing and there was like and I was like oh man why doesn't he get his flowers and there was like he did get his flowers he got his flowers when he was supposed to get his flowers and that's what happened you at the time Angel was popping like you couldn't touch Angel. Like, what is the obsession with this whole thing of like having to give someone their flowers forever and ever, yeah. amen. But then I looked at him and I thought, that's true. But then I can't imagine that Angel still doesn't feel like, rah, I wish people latched onto my music how they latched onto my music before. I mean, it depends on how people feel. So emotionally, for example, everyone, you, uh, you do you know, get what I'm saying? I don't do it for flowers, number one. Like, some people who do it for flowers, you don't even know that you have hay fever. You won't even be able to handle <laughs> it. That's the first thing, yeah? But one thing we need to understand is this. Is, so let me go back a step because it's a question you asked before yeah. to give context to what yeah. I'm going to say to you. So that gap where people felt like Eddie Caddy's gone quiet from after I did the O2 and I kind of... Yeah. People have to understand, we live on an island. This, the UK, no matter how we want to look at it, it's an island. It's a very small part of the bigger world. There is the continent of Africa, there's the continent of Asia, there's also um, North America, right? And I, I'm African and I love being African. And I've spent a lot of time on the continent. I was going, but I had a great time, yeah. you know, going to Nigeria and performing in front of multitude of people, going to Ghana, Uganda, mm -hmm. you know, South Africa, Joba Comedy Festival, you know, hosting uh, football uh, shows, across, and it was being syndicated across the continent. I was having a great time. And what people didn't realize is during that time as well, our music, was brewing up. People weren't really paying attention to what Afrobeats was because it was just like that one track you're playing a rave, right? But in the background, there were a multitude of people on the continent really pushing young Africans here who believed in that and that there was a connection happening. And I was a part of that. Mm -hmm. I would go to places like South by Southwest, you know, my friend Ricky, and you know, they'll put together amazing events. Do you know what I mean? I would, I would go and perform with people like Lauren Hill and Nas. Yeah. But I had fun with this because it gave me a perspective of the world is bigger than just the UK. And during that time, I had such a great time. It gave me a, a, not just a name, but a purpose in once again aligning what I am doing for my community and my culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I've been privileged to be a, a part of the David O and the Burner Boys and the, the Whiskey Journeys. And I want to talk about the, the BBC you know I mean? One Extra because you've right. got the BBC One Extra Afro Beats charts yeah. and yeah. We'll so so that, yeah. so that that was those were the things I was doing, and I was loving and had a great time spending time on the continent. Now moving forward, when we got to a stage where like, where an event like Mo happened. First, we have to understand one thing. Mo was a guy I was on a circuit, a circuit with, struggling. Sunday show. Let's be very clear. Oh, and a lot cool. of people don't realize. Some people go, oh man, you know, it was so lucky with the sketches that he's done and stuff. No, no, no. He's, Mo Gilligan yeah. used technology, used social media, and it happened for him on that way. But before that, we, this guy was one of the, one of the best hosts on, this, on a show where if you weren't funny, you're going to know this, right? I so used to Mo, go Sunday shows exactly. for Mo the Comedian. There you go. Because he used to literally just hold the crowd. Yeah. Like, and if he wasn't hosting one Sunday, you'd feel it. You'd be like, oh, Mo's not here. There you go. Boring. So people, understand, people that will know the journey with Mo, and Mo's one of the people that understands my journey, mm -hmm. understand his mm -hmm. journey. We had conversations about, no, one day, boy, these things. And I, he gave me my flowers during the time when I did the O2 back then. Yeah. The congratulations. I brought, yeah. you know, you're amazing. I've heard these words from people like Mo, Baba Tunde, the Richard Blackwoods, you know, the, all these great comics. So to now see someone who is an aspiring stand-up transition to becoming, you know, just a national treasure, which I believe Mo is right now, just mm -hmm. for me. Nice. When we got to the O2 arena, for me, you have to understand the emotions that I felt the first time we did it was like, we've done something audacious that people didn't think we'd achieve. Not everyone are aware of what's happening because social media is still not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. one day they're going to talk about it. Yeah. And now to have Mo, he said to me the other day, bro, I was around when you would go to different shows, my guy. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. And just promote and let everyone's looking at you one eye like, this guy, oh, Tarina, yeah, good luck. <laughs> so when he's doing it that day, I remember when Mo called me. We have the same management. Right. Understand? And so I'm around Mo. I've seen how hard he works. I've seen um, how selfless he is with his team, his production team, the people he brings in. But the day he called me and said, bro, doing the O2. You have to understand, this guy had already sold out Hammersmith for Polo 10 times. So we were like, bro, relax. <laughs> but I said, bro, I'm doing the O2. And I was like, bro, this is amazing. Because this is once again an amazing moment for the culture. But he's like, I'm doing a Mo Gideon and Friends and it'll be an honor for me to have you. See, that for me is enough. Because this is a guy who recognizes his journey, but he's so present, he hasn't forgotten the people that yeah, also played yeah, a part yeah, yeah, yeah. in that journey. Yeah, yeah. So on that day, 
We kept going at each other. I kept saying to him, bro, I'm so proud of you. He'll stop me. He's like, come on, man. Bro, stop this. You did this before. But I'm like, yeah, but I did that before and I played my role. You've now done it at this stage and you've done it on a level that is so gigantic that the next generation will be able to eat off this yeah, even more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a fulfillment for all of us. We all win. When I was on that stage with Slim, you have to look at Slim. Yeah. Slim was before me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you understand? So mm -hmm. for Slim to now be at the old arena, once again, it's like the role that everyone's played, he's done um, live at the Apollo. The role that these people have played is like you're now going back to when Richard Black was had the Channel 4 show. So there's a process. You've got to be happy because what people did before helped me. Mm -hmm. yeah? And, and what we're yeah. doing now will help the next yeah, generation. Yeah, yeah. But being on that stage, yeah, it, was, it came full circle. You have to understand. Yeah. A young Congolese guy like me. Yes, I'm still young, Zizi. Thank you. I know. I mean, I like, mate, yeah. I know you're about pushing about 45 Yeah, now. I'm going to do... What? <laughs> Yeah, you looked at my skin. <laughs> you at it, you I know, this, your skin you is you always... You looked at my, this, this fluorescent... I know, it's glowing. You looked at my father's son and I you said look, 45. I know, you're like... When are you, you're, you're not 40 yet, definitely. I am 40 yet. Yeah, so... But I'm, get, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close. Yeah, so when you... Yeah? Are, but, but what I'm, my point is, it's, the, it's just a simple fact of when I was on that stage and I looked, I thought, a young Congolese guy like me, once again, the aim is always to make your family proud to be able to represent your community and justify why your parents brought you over here to just be a good, be a good kid, yeah. do you know what I mean? But all your hard work, after all these years, from 2010, doing the O2, and then what, 11 years later, You're still scared. being there. But that's what I'm saying. And having a great year, as I did last year as well. Even with MOBOs as well. MOBOs was another beautiful you, thing. MOBOs, you've done really well with Thank that. You, Not honestly, because I, I was literally, what I was there in the flesh, yeah. and I was just like, it worked so well, like every the three of you together, it worked really well. It was like, okay, cool. And then we had you and like, but it was like a three, it, it was like a three arge. It's yeah, like yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah. It's a three arge. Yeah, I just made that up. I don't know if I've reached English in that level yet. I don't even know if that's the word. How many years? It was, yeah, it was like I'm a three arge. I'm not going to doubt you though. Should we use not. the word? I'm using it's it with a chess. Three, a three arge. Three arge. Would you like to have a three arge? That's, no, that's the North London one. What is going on with the ladies? Lovely segue there. Talk to me. No, I'm talking, I've never in my, I could, I wouldn't even know, I could, and I know a lot of stuff. I know a lot of stuff. I know who's linked to who and yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. I choose to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever known who you're linked to. Shout out to my team. <laughs> no, <laughs> shout out to those girls. Yeah, the team. <laughs> <laughs> The team. A whole team. <laughs> no, no, what? I mean, you know, but you know, the, 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 when I say the team, when you look over the years, you still put them all together. They've all contributed to the person that I am, so I put them together as a team. Have and you got they're children? Consistent. Yeah, I've got a daughter. Okay, nice, nice. Yeah, I've got a beautiful princess. How old is she? She's four years old. Has that changed you? Absolutely. We, well, what about the type of jokes you tell? But you, your jokes have always been my pretty... Joke, my, I've always been yeah, private. Very, yeah, I don't, really, I don't they swear. Have, yeah. I, and once again, see, I don't even give you a hint of how I move behind the scenes, you understand? Because I keep it family friendly, but that's been able to carve out a new audience for me. And it's allowed me to just be able to, like literally have a grandparents sit with their grandchildren, you know, and, and it's nice. But, um, so it hasn't changed, but I've just been able to now look at, you know, how it's changed as a father, um, you know, the next stage of my life and stuff. Because someone like you, you know too much. Uh. So the fact that you don't know much, I mean, so it's, I've done, I've done I right. I could, I'm trying to think. There might be one or two, but I mean, you've Have never... Have you ever heard anything? No, I've never heard, like, any, Have you like, ever seen anything? No. I've never... No, like, scandal, no, like, oh, you... so Because, you know, yeah. once in a while you get called, Yo, you know, my man was doing Listen, this... And you're like, Peter, swear! Peter is not down. My enemies are not tough to me. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? <laughs> my enemies are not tough. Peter is fine. No, I, I never, <laughs> never. And I that's... think, I think... Going back to what I said before, understand what do you want out of this? Hey, in this career for me, you've got to name your price. I can only say this based on my experience. Name your price, know what you want. Understand your purpose. What is it that you want to achieve out of this? Yeah? I don't carry my work home. What that means is I'm a stand-up comedian, I'm a host, I'm a presenter, I'm an actor, and I love all those things, right? But I'm also someone's child, man. I'm, you know, I'm also someone's like uh, sibling. I've got amazing siblings and they're proud of me. And I've got uncles and aunties and I, I, I carry a family name. No matter how mad my situation is back, you know, behind the scenes, and that's like everyone's situation, we've seen it play on yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah. I don't need to attach that to the public. Yeah, a public figure is allowed to have a private life. If you haven't mastered that, that's on you. Now don't get it twisted, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a man. You know, we enjoy life. Meaning, you know, we all know what that means. What, what does it mean? You said, I'm a man, I enjoy life. Yeah. That means you enjoy getting 
your big toe wet. No, five aside football with a man them on Sunday. That's what man them do. Yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. go to Ghana every year, have a great time. And do little committee. No. What are you saying? We I'm lived. Wait, oh, let me tell you, we yeah. lived in Ghana. Did we not live in Ghana? An amazing time. Love Ghana, man. The best. Love Ghana. You know, like when I go to Congo, I feel spiritually connected. I feel amazing. I feel like my childhood is back. I feel connected. I just feel at home. I just want to cry and laugh and anything. And then that, that, you, you can't exchange that feeling. Ghana is another place where I just feel at peace. I feel connected to the place because I've been look, looked after um, you know, by a lot of those people. Mm -hmm. A lot of different countries, I've got great friends from East Africa, West Central, but I've been going to Ghana for like over, oh, we're going towards probably 11 years and I've been looked after consistently. Ghanaians have played a big role in my life. So I love being in that space. Mm -hmm. So we had a great time. What do you think um, at the moment about like social media comedy? Do you feel it's taken away the art of comedy? I know you, earlier you it's said different. Deep, it's different types of comedy, it's not that deep. but then the art from whom? Yeah, well, I I, I didn't realize there's so many funny people in the world without social media. Thank if you, I'm being Lord. Exactly. if I'm being totally and, honest, and did we not? Need because it? shall I tell you why? You know, like you see those little memes and you'll see memes and they'll be like, especially like, tick, I don't know if you saw the one that went viral and I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was genius and she was saying showing God your posts like on judgment day and the, and oh, the, yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. it's just like the thing with that yeah, one yeah, was yeah, 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 yeah. i didn't mean that that was like literally Hilarious. like literally why would i be against your ups like i just think that is genius yeah. but as a comedian who does stand-up comedy and there's definitely an art and a skill to do in stand-up do you ever see those type of things maybe not that one because that was a really good one and mm -hmm. i think there's a level of intelligence there do you ever see things and you're just like right bruh so, like yeah. how why see, what you're, are we doing you you have every right to say what you've just said because comedy is subjective. It's relative to how your sense of humor, what mm. you actually find funny. Not everyone has the same sense of humor. If you can manage to get a thousand people in the room and they're all laughing at that one joke at the same time, like, ha, 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 sounding like a church choir, you've achieved something amazing. You can do that for an hour, you are incredibly talented. Cool. Now, we're human beings. I'm also allowed to not find something funny. Right? I'm a guy that, like you said, with the memes, you'll find me on my phone going up. Like, earlier before yeah, we filmed, yeah, yeah. I showed you that thing, and I hate laughing at things that I actually find so funny, I can't control it, and I can't actually put my finger, why is that so funny? It's taken over. Yeah, yeah. But we're human beings, and we're allowed to, you know, um, find something funny and not find it funny. Where for me, it becomes a bit weird for me, right? It's like, I don't have that emotional, crazy attachment to stand up. Okay. The, and, and, and comedy in general. I have, an, I have an attachment to my talent, my purpose, my, just my existence in this, in this entertainment circle. So what I mean by that is, there'll be times I'll do stand-up and then I'll just stop and I'll be hosting. You know, you'll see me on Afro Nation or something. Yeah, yeah. So, do you know what I mean? And sometimes you, I'll be presenting on radio, you know, like, and then sometimes I might act. Those are all things that showcases my talent. So I'm not one of those guys that, like, in a folklore stand-up, is like, this is what, you know, the disciples decided when they climbed up the mountains. Sanai of stand up, this is this were the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not meme. Thou yeah. shalt not. I'm not that guy. I'm like, if people find it funny, that's your audience. There are a lot of people that are needed in this world. Sometimes we discover them by the tools that God provides in the new age. And social media has provided us. Like, what are we on now? Social media, yeah. Thank you. YouTube, yeah. ZZ became big because of social media. Yeah, because yeah, before yeah. the social media, me and you were wandering up and down North London looking for uh, bread. That's what we did, bruv. Literally, sweet bread. That's what we did. Up and down North London, just looking for sweet bread. <laughs> but because social media has come, we have discovered a gem like ZZ. We've discovered, like, you know, gems like so many uh, um, comedians, artists that have come along. I can't stop that. Now, in order, when you're talking about taking the art away, I don't know what, it's not taking the art away from me because my lane is clear. I am happy for people. To, and I'm not trying to sound like, oh, the guy, nice guy. I truly am, like, for me, it's tunnel vision. I am happy for those people that do their thing. If I don't find you funny, I, I might tell you, I might not tell you. Right. But I don't have to find you funny. And it's like, that doesn't affect what I do. Because when I'm on a stage, most of the time it's me with a mic. There's no one else distracting, it's me and the audience. And that day, I don't do, I don't do free sense. I mean, I don't do them things there. Oh, so how boring. I'm talking about that on stage. I'm talking oh, about on stage, sorry. Zizi. Yeah? Oh, sorry. I mean, so me and the audience and nobody else, Zizi. Stay with me, Zizi. Oh, sorry, sorry, Stay sorry. Stay with me. I was going to say, how was it being a black comedian in mainstream media? Ask me that question again. How was it being a black comedian in mainstream, in the comedy world? Is it one in, one out? Are we getting better? Are, they, are there more opportunities now? How, how is it? 
Different people give you different answers depending on like how they grew up, depending on what they, the, what they, the aim is, whatever. For me, um, I remember being asked this question when we was about to do the O2. I was getting a lot of people asked me different things. Is that yeah. what's the purpose of doing this? I said, because I come from a scene where we're amazing. We come out every Sunday, Saturday, dressed up, a thousand people, two thousand people, and none of you guys care. Yeah. So now we've got to scream louder. And our generation is going to scream a little bit louder. Sometimes we're going to just do things for ourselves. I thought, oh, okay, so what? You want to be like Gina yesterday and go over to America? I said, I don't have to go over to America. That was Gina's choice. Yeah. I am here. Yeah. I see what's available to me. I do not use those things as obstacles. Because ultimately, I can just use that, that as, a, as, a, as, as motivation mm -hmm. to actually be able to surpass all those uh, obstacles. I'm also from Congo. It's easy. Listen, you have to understand. I went back to Congo 2010 for the first time, came to this country in 1992. 18 years it took for me to go back. Wow. Because it's not like everybody else, that some of you are just born into passports, isn't it? You wake up and there's a passport next to you. You don't know the struggles. Some of us, you're here, you have to justify why you still need to be here <laughs> and not go home for a while. Right, right, These are yeah, the things yeah. that happen. So when I went back home after 18 years and I looked at a lot of my cousins who I'd never met, you know, um, and I thought, this could have been me. Like, how did it happen that it just happened to be my dad who had me to bring me to the UK to be exposed? My, my family members will never know what Congo looks like from my point of view. The significance of Congo, the significance of what I'm doing over there. So I've had a good start. I've had a good opportunity. So that's what I focus on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, when we start looking at, okay, as a young British guy in this country, I'm on a vibe of like, this is a country where mainstream is a reflection of your audience. The majority of the audience in this country are white. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change. Yeah. And they have the way they've been brought up and what they expect to see on TV. They're aware that there's a minority and sometimes they'll react just like, no, nah, I don't really find that little culture funny. I'm, I want to see a bit more Anton Deck, right? Cool. What we have to understand is when those opportunities come, we're great at it, it just increases. The things that are happening now, a lot more visibility than happened before. The new yeah, generation, yeah. we've got more tools. Once again, I'm, I'm not just using an example because I'm proud of you, but you are, once again, ITV may not have hollered at you, may not have. Now there's, there's great people working in all these, um, you know, yeah, broadcasting yeah, yeah. spaces, mm. and they are looking at people like yourself. They look, someone like me, who wants to be in those mainstream spaces. Yeah. I want to put on a shiny suit. I want to be able to do a bit of Bruce Forsyth like I did back in the days, because I feel like I can be on those spaces. Yeah. So it's like, the opportunity is there because we have different platforms. We don't have to audition per se. We use our own platforms to put ourselves on this pedestal. If they come for us, they come for us. If they don't, we just keep enjoying it. That's, I, I look at it like that. I don't, I don't look at it as, you know, oh yeah, this thing is half, half empty. Yeah, I'm looking at it, it's nearly full. We put yourself on a pedestal. If they come, they come. Yeah. If they don't, we still enjoy ourselves. We still enjoy ourselves, man. It's still, still Afrobeats. It's still, still Afrobeats. Afro Do you listen to my show? I'm, you know, Eddie, I'm not a huge Afrobeats person. What does that mean? Which, so I don't necessarily enjoy In that Ghana, them. the way you was moving your waist around, okay, all right. What happened in Ghana when you was looking for the Ghanaian men to come and carry you? Is that not Afrobeats? Ah, Zizi Eddie, knows. is this what we're doing? No, you said it. Shade, Shade Baron and places, they, they <laughs> retweeted you. I found what? out Say from, what? You said, where are these Ghanaian men that look so, why do they look so smooth? Oh my God, did Shade Baron put that on? Don't go on like you know, no, they look no, so Whatever, whatever. Sometimes yeah, I don't know what they do. No, no, Lizzie, some, look, Z, honestly, Z. on God, on God and them, okay? I Leave seriously. God out of this. We're not in <laughs> church, Zizi. God is not here Listen. right now. You know, when your show comes on, God says, let me keep an eye so I can watch the, 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 the repeat. What I'm, I'm saying not, to you is, listen. you celebrated the Ghanaian men. You, I, me and you at many parties. Were you not? Were no, you not, I was the, not. Zizi. <laughs> You, you told the world you like, you wanted some Ghanaian men do. because you want Afrobeat. Yeah, no, 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 I, I love an Afrobeat. I go. love it. So, it's, it's, and with music, it's even better. I'm, so, constant, I'm constantly receiving Afrobeat right now. That's okay. However, I'm happy for you. But what I'm saying, when you say you're not a fan of the music, the music is the reason why you're smiling right no, 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 now. No, no, no. Thinking okay, about the I music. Can I just say so? I should say, okay. I've learned to like it a lot. You've learned? Who talk, is that, is no, 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 is that no, no, an Afrobeat no. school? No, listen, I'm going to keep it 100. Talk to me. When Afrobeats used to come on back in the club, back in the days, yeah. remember when it first Afrobeats, and yeah. you made a good point. You were definitely one of the people at the forefront pushing for Afrobeats. You yeah. definitely. But when it used to come on in the clubs back in the day, I'd be like, oh, do we? Same how I feel about house music. And mm -hmm. I've got to, as, my, as I've got older and maturer, and my, yeah. my, my sounds are, you know, I now can appreciate it, but would it be my go-to genre? Yeah. 
No, Afrobeat so wouldn't be my go-to genre. So we could say you've been saved, because I just feel like you're late in the game. It's made, well, that's, yes. It's made you, does it make you happy when you hear Afro, Afrobeat? Do you know what? And I was saying this the other day to my cousin. I was saying this to my cousin. I was saying this to my cousin that Afrobeats, okay, one thing I will say about Afro, Afrobeats over dancehall is yeah. You can put Afro beats on in front of anyone. Like I could put it on in front of my gran and she's not gonna hear, skin out your pom pom. Like you're not gonna hear those, those lyrics. So we that say it is in a different way. Yeah, but well, if you listen to Afro, we say yeah, but it. Yeah, but that's probably because that's what I'm saying. You're smart at it. You guys are smart at making it sound smooth. We are just doing skin out your pom. And it's like, do we have to have the pom poms? So, everything? okay, so let's, let's, let's say this, right? For me, I think Afrobeats is dance or dance or is Afrobeats. I think we, we, th there is this conversation of Caribbeans and Africans and we are the same people. We are siblings, you know, from the motherland and some of us, you know, are just born in other spaces of the world, which is a beautiful thing because we, we've, we've colonized the majority of the world. My whole vibe is this. The reason why you connect to Afrobeats is because dance or already prepared you. The reason yes. why people love dance is because Afrobeats yeah, 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 already yeah, prepared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you watch a lot of the... When I watch me, you see this... this yeah. See all that. In Congo, we did all this. No, no, no. Right? I agree. Da, I. <laughs> da, da. You see all that movie. In Congo, we did it. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We call of it course. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not disputing yeah. that. So it's the same thing. It, but I, my sound. Is Afrobeat. Anyway, look, I'm glad. But your show. Yeah. Your show. I've listened okay. to a few shows out here, but I'm not a. Ra I'm being totally honest. Tune in, tune in, tune I'm not an avid radio listener. Unless, because I don't drive, do I? I can't, I've got my, still don't have my life. But it's a significant moment right now. Like, no, but that's um, what I'm saying. But yeah. then, when I saw that they done that, BBC One Extra, yeah. had an official Afrobeats chart, I thought, would you look at that? That is amazing. Yeah, man. Like, for that to even, regardless if it's my favourite genre or not, I'm happy for the progression it's of it. It's beautiful, it's a reflection. The, that, oh, because the, the, the demand. We don't, yeah, we don't. I'm pretty, we don't have an official dance or um, we don't. I'm not sure. It might have happened before, I but yeah, right yeah, now. But, but yeah. if you look at the demand, you know, what Wiz has been doing. Yeah. What even on the other side, all the other Africans, the Congolese lot have been doing for years, that it's all come together now, you know, with the burners and the day. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like the demand, the streams, the download. But this is official. A lot of people think we just make up. Well, the yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's that's actually why the down, it's, you know, yeah. top 20 download, most downloaded and streamed tracks in the UK. So for one extra to be able to connect with that, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but that also connects from the guys at Afro Nation because they they started off that idea. It was birthed from the guys behind you Afro do Nation, a lot. connected to. Do people come in your comments ever for Afro Nation? No, no, they, my own is different. I was just wondering because they, cause they a few know. People, <laughs> but I'll, I'll tell you, you something. That. I'll tell you something like that. A few people would come and I'll say, first of all, I'm proud of being part of the, the brand. Mm -hmm. It's a learning process. The things that we were crying for 15 years ago are the things that are happening now. Mm -hmm. If they told me this may happen, I would take that. If that's a price I'm willing to pay for the feedback that, because things can go wrong. Yeah. You don't always get things right. But the, point, the, the issue is the bigger picture is what it's all about. And a brand like Afro Nation and many other brands of, from different uh, organizers, as long as it's, it's about African music, it's about Afrobeats, it's always going to be beautiful because I look at the bigger picture. So I'm, I'm proud of everyone that's doing their part in keep being ambassadors for this culture. And you are one of the four front. God bless you, man. 100%. I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of you too. So, it's so nice that like this is the longest we've we've we spoke. I feel like this I was know, just about yeah. me, like me and you. Because although we know we like you, you don't get to unless someone's like a part of your everyday life. You don't get to talk to them that much. You see them out at events. You say hi. You might sit down and have a dinner, but you're amongst loads of other people, so you yeah. don't get to have like a one-on-one. -on -one. So. I have really enjoyed this. What's happening next? Anything we can look at? Um, you acting? Know, You're doing, acting? I saw your, yeah, your, yeah. your, your, your um, um, what's it? Motherhood? Uh, some motherhood. Some motherhood. Some motherhood. Some, some other yeah, big shout out to Adam motherhood. Deacon. The yeah. guy, the guy went free stage. Adam is back. He no, was it's with my nice. boy Jazzy. I, so uh, I had a parking attendant role in another hood, right? Yes, So they yes. called me back to have that little section, which just makes me happy to just be a part of the current culture as well. But I want to do a lot more acting um, in the future. And uh, there's, there's more things coming up, man. I want to, you know, present a lot more. Um, you know, and that's I'm, been happening well for you. Yeah, like, I'm part of an amazing yeah, team. It's, it's been nice. The, the nice team transition. That I'm part of, my guys at UTC. Big shout out to my brother, Baba Tun, I have to say, because he pushed me to like, yo, you need to join the family. And, this, and great things are happening nice, with, nice, nice. with that. So, um, and just, yeah, I want to do more stuff back home uh, on the continent. So I'll, I'll definitely keep you updated. I have a question for you, though. Go on. Are you happy? Do you know what overall I am? 
obviously you have off days. You have off days where you're not happy and you're a bit, you might be like, oh, this is annoying. But overall, which I think is how you should look at it, I'm happy, I am. I enjoy what I'm doing. Um, now it is like work. So there are times now, whereas before it was like my escape, if that makes sense, like, oh, my nine to five. But now, oh, I'm excited because I get to go to filming. Is now it, it's is, a, is it, is it? Are you happy? Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just, no, I was just, I'm, I, I, I'm just giving the content. Get, 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 get that guy in it. What, the, um, get that guy. Whenever it happens. Because I feel like when, you have, when you're talking about, when you're asking all these questions, because you need someone to just relax you. Properly, no. And then you it, will never this, talk about it again. Can I just say something? Yeah. The day I get somebody that is my own personal person, I'm just going to be talking even more crud, like on like on steroids <laughs> like on steroids because it's the only thing <laughs> can i just say something yeah, the only, right listen guy. listen listen you'll be speechless no, 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 let me no, take no, you to my village no, you'll no. be speechless <laughs> <laughs> you'll be speaking in tongues no, there'll be nothing coming out <laughs> no. don't worry about that what are you talking about <laughs> no i'm telling you because i'll get the transferable energy and then i will literally be like ah, really? literally oh, <laughs> good luck <laughs> afrobeat <laughs> Well, guys, um, thank you, Eddie. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you have to come back again. Oh, yeah, no, I'll be back. When you got back. Thank you for having me. This has thank been you. amazing. Well, guys, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, take a friend. We out. Get, get.